Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your teacher Usman Ali and the video is regarding the numerical one of the MS Word file. So you have that MS Word file and there are two numericals you can find. So that's uh, numerical one uh, and okay. Now this numerical is slightly different from the previous task, task one, task two, task three and task four that we have done. Uh, the, the, the difference, it's as you can see right now. Uh, previously in those tasks we were went uh, we were going little basic and we were only discussing one code actually uh, in real life scenarios we don't have one quotes we have actually two quotes for the same exchange rate uh, one is called the bit quote and the second one is called the ask quote actually uh, you do have an understanding what actually bid means and ask mean from the PPT chapter because I have uh, discussed it there in the audio recordings as well but still when I talk about the bid, so bid actually means the buying price of bank. You can call money exchange guy as well, money exchange company as well, but I would just as a generic term I will use bank. And when I say ask, so ask is actually the selling price of bank. Okay, remember this thing. We are not market makers actually our transactions are very small you me sometime we we need to buy one hundred dollars sometime we need to sell one thousand dollars or something like that so these are nothing actually uh, banks money exchange dealers okay these actually these are those people who are the market makers so the quotations or the rates actually are based on their transactions okay so when I say bid, it means when the banker is buying. And when I say ask, it means when the banker is selling actually on us. So if let's say I am trying to sell dollars, though I am the seller of the dollar, but bank is not the seller. If I'm selling, so bank is buying, then bank gonna use this rate. But if I go to a bank and I say that I want to purchase dollars, so as a customer, though I want to buy dollars, but bank is not buying, bank is actually selling dollar on me. So then they're gonna use the selling price of their, okay, one thing. The second thing that you must know is this format. A, this is not read as USD divided by Fs. No, that's it's then it's not a division sign actually here. In in this exchange rate word, we do not interpret as USD divided by Fs. We actually say that one USD, whatever currency or whichever currency is on the left side of the what you say the slash, so that would be considered as one unit. Okay, so that's like one USD. I will say one euro, I will say one euro. So we can say that one USD is equal to this much quantity of Fs actually. Okay, so we can say one USD is equal to 78.15 Fs and one USD is equal to 78.17 Fs. Okay, likewise one euro is equal to 1.1 USD or 1 euro is equal to 1.1010 USD and likewise 1 euro is equal to this much Fs. So these are the two things that you must know uh, before going through the numerical. One is the bid and the next is the ask. Bid is the buying price of the bank, ask is the selling price and then 1 USD is equal to this much Fs actually. So this oblique sign here slash sign here does not represent a division here now what you do is that if if you come across certain situation and you need to find the arbitrage flow so you, you before you start doing the numerical you had to bring the numerical into the format with which we are actually used to which format we are used to if you remember our previous uh, numericals actually so we are used to the, this format Australian dollar divided by Fs we call that P by Q form so we must shift it into this form actually so let's shift that in order to shift it we will go through the first step first step is actually to identify which codes do you use actually okay so if you see in the in the numerical one it is said that that suppose we have 500,000 Fs which we want to convert into Euro. Okay, so let's find an exchange rate of Fs to Euro. This is an exchange rate of Fs to Euro. Let me highlight it. So it means that 
this exchange rate of 1 euro is equal to this much F's will actually become the problematic one. Okay, you remember that problematic one is just a word I'm using actually. So it's, it's like this. This 1 euro is equal to this much F's will become like this box. Is it okay? So it's like highlight or box. It's the same thing. So just remember this thing and our ultimate objective is to convert F's into Euro. So look at this thing. If I am converting F's into Euro, then uh, what actually is, if it means that I am selling F's and I want to purchase Euros. Con I'm I want to convert 500,000 F's into Euro, which means I want to purchase euros. I want to buy euros. If I am buying, then obviously bank is selling. Okay? If I am buying euro, then the bank is selling euro on me. And the selling price of the bank is called ask. So it means that I am going to use this price, 86.07. On every one euro I buy, I must pay this much money. Is it okay? So I would write here in identify which code to use. I will write here, I'm going to use 86.07 code. I took it from here. Okay. Then the next. Okay. Then the next is what? The next is actually the indirect way of uh, doing it. So I will use a little bit space. I need, and okay, I will use it here. If I go for indirect, so first I will convert these Fs into a third currency, which is USD and then I will convert it into Euro. Okay, so it means I will sell F's and I will purchase dollars. I will purchase dollars. This is F's and USD. Okay, this is F's and USD. Okay, so I am selling F's to buy dollars. If I am buying dollar, what the bank is doing? The bank is selling dollars actually, which means I'm gonna use this price if I purchase dollars. So for USD and F, I will use the price 78.17. Okay. Once I have dollars, then I will sell dollars to purchase euros. Is it okay? Uh, so I will sell dollars to purchase euros. If I am buying euro, then what the bank is doing? Bank is selling euro on me. So that's ask selling price of bank. Okay. So then I'm going to use this price. Euro to USD, I uh, would be using 1.1010 rate actually. So this is how I have selected the rate using the I, what I am buying and what the bank is selling or buying actually. Okay. And then these exchange rates are interpreted in the, in the one unit actually. So if I say like USD to Fs, though that I am selling Fs, but actually what important here is what is one unit important thing here is one USD one euro one euro if it was like F slash USD then the important thing would be F's okay so whatever is one that's the important thing and the buying and the selling decision are based on what is one here okay so these are the exchange rates then in the next step I convert these exchange rates into a P by Q form so that's simple P by Q form how to read this thing the, the reading of this thing is 1 USD is equal to this much F's or in other terms the same thing can be written as F's divided by USD is equal to 78.17 there is no difference between these two now okay then this can be written as USD divided by Euro is equal to 1.1010 and this one could be written as F's divided by Euro is equal to 86.07. So ladies and gentlemen, sorry. So you just saw that we actually discussed buying and selling. And then from there we identified the quotes that we're going to use actually. And then we shifted it to the P by Q form. Is it okay? And by the way, this, sorry, this is the problematic code that we had so if you see here if I compare now this form okay and this form now so that's the same there is no difference so actually we just did some these two extra steps in order to convert this 
form into the form that we have actually learned how to use it. Now that we have our uh, values in the P by Q form, so as I said that we would be in a position to solve the numerical or you would be in a position to solve the numerical by yourself. So what I just did is I have already solved it now. So it's like the same values. I have shifted it here. And now as you can see this format would be no more unique format for you. Okay. Uh, I calculated the uh, cross code by multiplying the non-problematic uh, quotations. We got 86.06 which was actually a rounded value by the way. Okay. And 86.07 so it's not a difference but still mathematically there is a difference but uh, it's kind of a neutral thing you will see when I proceed in the numerical you will realize that there, there won't be any profit actually. So <clears throat> uh, the direct method and indirect method then in the direct method we were supposed to convert F's 5 lakh F's into euro actually. So like here we did the conversion. Now I will not go word by word because you know the process now so you can actually do it reversal was needed because of currency in hand uh, must be written at the bottom rule. So when we converted 5 lakh apps into euro we got 5809.22 euros by the that's rounded figure okay keep in mind. Then the indirect rule was that converting apps to dollar first and then dollar to euro. So we would first convert 5 lakh apps into dollar and then dollar into euro. So apps to dollar that's the exchange rate we used it. Reversal quantity rate multiplication we got six thousand three hundred and ninety six point thirty two dollars which we then intend to convert to euro and then that's the dollar euro exchange rate so again the reversal because of currency in hand rule conversion we did and we got five thousand eight hundred and nine point fifty five as B a five thousand eight hundred nine point twenty two so it's like B is almost equal to A. So we do not have any uh, any difference here. Either way we go same actually. Okay. Uh, why? Because of the exchange rates are like almost uh, equal to each other. And the data which I used actually to solve the numerical was real life data. It was a real life data. Okay. Taken from the DAB website. Uh, the Afghanistan bank website actually. So in the real life scenario, I wanted to uh, I wanted to do it with real life. I knew that there won't be profit means the probability of earning profit won't be that much big. Actually, the purpose of being was actually to tell you that in real life, it's kind of not impossible, but difficult to find arbitrage. And as if you remember of um, my discussion of the PPT chapter audio recording that we said that arbitrage is a temporary market opportunity and it depends on the on the 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 product or that asset in which you are doing let's say if you want to earn profit in currencies so you need to be super fast in making decisions actually why because one currency is a 24 hour market it's an online internet based market actually where in every second the price of currency changes so that's why you need to be super fast to make uh, in making your decisions okay it's not like a kind of vegetable uh, arbitrage or arbitrage opportunity in fruits or any other commodity okay this is kind of very online okay so this is how you solve uh, a numerical of arbitrage using bid and ask prices actually what you do is you first need to identify which quotes you're going to use that that is actually based on what you are buying actually whatever you are buying so keep in mind the bank is selling and the selling price of the bank is important because they are the market makers we are not the market makers actually and then obviously the currency which we have it's based on that also like here I was converting apps into euro so it means I was buying euro okay and the exchange rate is one euro it means the dominant currency here is that one whatever is this one euro okay so it means I am buying euros if I'm buying euros bank is selling I'm going to use this rate we got the rate we got the P by Q form and that's it we got our numerical as well uh, thank you very much ladies and gentlemen stay safe